Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Spartus Full View. It was made from 1948 to 1960. The flash attachment was uh, added starting in 1949, so this one's no earlier than that. It's a TLR, twin lens reflex, or a pseudo TLR as some people call it because it doesn't have a focusing lens. They called it the Full View because the viewfinder, it's got a nice magnifier over the uh, ground glass, is about the same size as the negative, uh, which is 6x6 six six on 120 film. Actually, the, the mask here for the film, the viewfinder, both a hair smaller than 6 millimeters, 6 centimeters, but eh, close enough. Um, it's labeled inside for 120 film. It's embossed here in the back. I read somewhere that it could take 620. I tried a spool, but the flange on the take-up spool in this one is too big for 620. There were a lot of variations of this camera, so maybe some of them could take both types. It has a fixed focus 92 millimeter lens. Some of them were labeled Cyanar, S-C-I-E-N-A-R. Um, it's a plastic lens, although it's for a camera this vintage, it's fairly sharp. The manual for the camera says best results between 8 and 12 feet. It has a rotary shutter. It's press type. It's self cocks. Time for that is all over the place. I've seen them as fast as 1 one hundredth of a second. Most people have actually used these. say, yeah, just ballpark it at about a sixtieth of a second. I found on Google Books, uh, Boys Life magazine from September 1953 and it has a hobby house like a how-to section where kids would write in asking questions about their different hobbies and somebody asked about this camera and they said it's f13 at a 30th of a second so f13 to f16 a 30th to a hundredth of a second anywhere in there with fairly slow speed film and you're going to be okay Spartus was part of the Chicago cluster, so-called, of cameras. It's a bewildering array of brands and models, and they were all actually the same guy, Jack Galter. He's a fascinating character. I'll put a link below. There's a good biography of him online. You know, it's a fairly quick read, five minutes, but it's pretty funny, some of the, some of the stuff this guy pulled. In 1951... He uh, sold the Spartus Camera Company to, I believe it was his head of sales, a guy named Harold Rubin. And the, uh, you know, rather than being uh, manufactured by Spartus, which some of them say, along with others, uh, for a while these were labeled Harold Manufacturing. For some reason he spelled Harold H E R O L D instead of Harold with an A, like his name. So there were dozens, literally, of variations in this, in the manufacturer, the name, the faceplate design, and even the body mold designs varied. They got somewhat less Art Deco and more kind of mid-century modern as time went on. There was some film in this when I bought it. Uh, there was a little over half of the frame shot. It was some uh, old Kodak Verachrome pan. I shot... Uh, three or four frames. It was just too old and really fogged. I think uh, the camera back had been opened too many times. Or just stray light coming in through the ruby window. That's your frame counter. And because of that, I don't trust them. I put some black console tape over it. Anyway, uh, most of the decent photos you'll see are found photos. The ones that were already on the film spooled up, protected by the paper, were actually in pretty decent shape. I mean, I dorked around with them a little bit in Photoshop, but I didn't have to do too much. The film had been in the camera so long, it had a permanent bend where it takes a corner around this roller. had a little bit of rust, which I cleaned off before I tried to use it. Um, the only real shot that I took with this, I used some Instax Mini film. Um, and pop the flash using an actual Instax mini camera, the same one I used to process that frame. And, you know, 
other than my framing sucking because I was trying to work two cameras at once at night, uh, it came out pretty good. So it's a working camera and sharper than I expected. So I'm going to move on to the next camera and I will see you then.